Hi, this is James Gard, the Sydney Tech Geek, and I'm here with Brian Claypool from Barco. Now, every year I do a little bit about their sound system, Oro Max, and there's always something to talk about or a new part of the story. And this year, the story is evolving still, and we've got a new sound processor. So, can you tell us about what's going on here? Certainly, we have the new processor called the APX Oro Max Spatial Audio Renderer. So. It's taking all of the elements that the SMPTE groups have been working on so hard for the past couple years and implemented them in a way so that we can show that there is a workflow and there's the ability for a standards-based bitstream to actually operate in real life. So the processor, which we have the prototype here on display and also operating in our theater with a premium experience, takes that elementary aspect of an interoperable bitstream and puts it into a Barco workflow using rendering technology from ISONO into the Oro speaker configuration to show the world that immersive of sound that's interoperable at a very, very high quality level is something that we can achieve. Uh, the processor has the ability to output up to 32 channels. So we've always taken the position that it's not about how many channels that you have in a room, it's about where you put those speakers, how you can configure them, and the quality of the technology behind it. Uh, so right now we have about 350 installations out there with Oro 11.1, and this processor will enable us to go into every single one of those screens, supply an upgrade that allows us to get to that interoperable standard that then allows all titles to be able to play back in immersive sound, but still at a very high quality level. And, and looking at it, it's a, it looks like a very complete and finished box, so that's sort of very good to know. And really, the only frustration I have with this is that it's been terribly slow for the market to rally around making these this content for this MDA type standard space deliverable. What's you know is there any update we can have on that and any roadmap or time frame we can look into that? Well there's there's multiple aspects of the SMPTE standards. There's synchronization, uh, there's data transfer, there's the bitstream, and then there's, of course, the expectations that the renderer must have once it receives those definitions. And, and that's really kind of the tricky part. Um, and that's also where some of the secret sauce comes in. So when SMPTE gets done with the standardization efforts, we still need to go through the process of showing to the world that the renderers behave correctly. Uh, and there's ways to do that objectively, but there's also subjective evaluations that have to be done. Uh, we made a white paper last year for the fall uh, SMPTE technical conference where we kind of outlined different ways where you can show that kind of interoperability. But again, the end result is we need to get a lot more content made. We need to get that content to be made at a very high quality level and the audience has to be able to tell a difference. Um, that may not be achieved by just putting two speakers here, two speakers there and calling it immersive sound. That may actually do more damage than it does good. Uh, having said that, we have to be aware of the cost consciousness of the exhibitors and make sure that existing equipment can still be used in their auditoriums. They don't have to replace a whole lot of stuff. Um, but all of that aspect does take time, and all of these different variables are in the mindsets of everybody when they're sitting at these SMPTE meetings. So uh, it's a consensus group, and it takes a while for everybody to reach a consensus. Yes, I know. I, I attend some of those meetings sometimes, and I, I, know, I know what's going on to a degree, but I like to hear it from... You're closer to it. That's what you do all the time, and um, it's so frustrating. I've sort of pit, um, carved off listening to the, that uh, SMPTE group anymore because it's, I've got so many other things to do at the moment. And the time zone is so convenient. Uh, <laughs> in Australia, when you guys have meetings, yeah. But it's good to see. One comment I'd like to say is that I, I'm very uh, enthusiastic about how Barco has been tracking that that developments, and pretty much what you see here is as close as to what the group is trying to do at any particular time. So when the group does come to the eventual conclusion or the eventual target of what they're trying to achieve, you will be a step behind it in terms of starting the next evolution of doing exactly what you said, getting the content made, getting the content to the people and evolving you know, this new workflow and the, the capabilities of MDA. So thank you very much, Brian. It's, a, it's hard work. It's sloggy work. It is. So, and it's know. not just necessarily about MDA. It's, it's a SMPTE, cons DTS has been involved, yes, Dolby's yes. been involved, Barco's been involved. We're all trying to come together as a group and realize this, this ultimate interoperability that can be achieved. Uh, and, and if SMPTE can do that, we're all going to be in a very happy world. Yeah, I agree. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you, James. And this is me with Brian Claypool from Barco on Oro Max and its developments for CinemaCon 2016. Bye for now.